Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another Stephen King review. Today we are talking about Stephen King's third published novel, and that is The Shining in all its many forms. This is uh, the original movie tie-in cover for the Kubrick film. This is just a reissue. It's a uh, Anchor Books. And then I'll go ahead and show you guys the original Doubleday first edition with the artwork that wraps all the way around to there. There you go. Yeah, very nice edition. Very nice, very nice. But the one that we are going to be talking today, uh, the one that we are going to be talking about today uh, is going to be the Cemetery Dance. Double Day Edition, and that is this one. I already took it all out. I will be doing, uh, not unboxings, but I'll be doing showcases. If you've seen my ones for uh, Horns, Joe Hill's Horns, for Sleeping Beauties, it's right here, uh, and Nosferatu, I'm going to be doing another one for the Double Day series as we go along through that. I have live unboxings of those things, but the quality just isn't very good, so I'm going to go back through them again. I'm going to do Carrie, uh, Salem's Lot, and then The Shining. But the reason why we're talking about this one today in the spoiler review is because I wanted to talk about some things that happen at the beginning and end of the book that are not that is not in any other edition of the book. And that is, of course, before the play and after the play. Um, after the play was never published at all, never included in the book in any form other than the Cemetery Dance edition, and that white is blindingly white. But uh, uh, before the play was included uh, with the TV Guide, oddly enough, it was included in there. So what is in before the play? Uh, I wish I could get the rights to just read it to you guys, but I cannot. And also, every time I see this, it tickles me. But a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, Stephen King's third book, he says, this is for Joe Hill King, who shines on. Not Joseph Hillstrom King, but for Joe Hill King. As, I, as if he knew uh, his son was going to be uh, using the Joe Hill name. But it's funny that that, uh, that was there the entire time that Joe Hill was writing you know, and publishing 20th Century Ghosts. Uh, heart-shaped box and horns and nobody caught that not even myself it's a funny side note for that one is I bought 20th century no I bought heart-shaped box and horns without knowing that Joe Hill was King's son and I ended up loving them but as I was reading horns I was like this feels awfully familiar and I can't I couldn't place who so uh, the introduction is by Stephen King I highly suggest if you have this version of the book that you read everything in here except for the cut stuff uh, that the editorial process did because uh, there's even a section in here where uh, they the a famous Stephen King collector gives the editorial notes from the original edit of the book and that's, that's probably the only boring part here but in the introduction King talks about his inspiration for the book and what he was trying to accomplish this time around. He wanted to reach higher uh, than he had reached before with Carrie and Salem's Lot. In fact, I think in another introduction for The Shining, uh, I believe it's in this edition, it might not be, it might be in another one, um, he talks about how it, there comes a time in every author's career when he has to decide whether or not he's going to keep on writing the same old thing over and over again or if he's going to try and reach farther and that's what King did and as far as I'm concerned The Shining is the first real Stephen King book. Carrie uh, and Salem's Lot they feel like an author trying to find his voice and then The Shining you really really feel that voice but before the play is uh, broken up into five different sections uh, different scenes, I should say. Um, and the first one is the third floor of a resort hotel, hotel fallen upon hard times. There's uh, Bob T. Watson, who is the, uh, I believe it's, I believe that's his name. Um, but anyways, it's the guy who, I'm going to stumble on names. I'm going to give you the overview of it. The, in the, in the book itself, 
you you meet the guy who works on the boiler. He is the one who shows Jack how to fix the how to dump the boiler so that it doesn't explode. Well, his great grandfather or great great I can't remember exactly what it is. Maybe it was his daddy. I don't, I can't remember right now off the top of my head. But they are the one. He was the one who actually built the hotel. And when he built the hotel, there was financial struggle after financial struggle, and every time he seemed to be getting ahead, something would happen. They had to repave a road three times. Um, there's several things just over and over and over again, and he never got out of the red, so he finally sold it to another individual. I think his name was Paris. Sold it to another indivi individual, and that individual ended up going into the, the red also, or was in the red to begin with. It's just all the troubles that came of it, how some of the ghosts got there. Uh, extended scenes from, like, Grady was a, another one that I enjoyed quite a bit. There's so much in Before the Play that I really, really loved that I wish was in every edition of it. Because I'd like to talk to, you know, my friends about why this, uh, why this intro should never have been cut out of the book. Now, as far as whether or not it was cut out, um, or if it was added later on to, to fit in, give something to add into the movie time, I, I don't know. Um, I'm not that much of a historian where Stephen King is concerned that I can answer those questions. But, and then scene two, a bedroom in the wee hours of the morning is a, uh, they're basically short stories from the different people who either, who either, either built, owned, or stayed at uh, the Overlook Hotel, and this one's uh, Kitty, no, not Kitty, sorry, Lottie Kilgallon, K-I-L-Gallon, G-A-L-L-O-N. I uh, believe she's either a rich woman or an actress, I can't remember which, but that one was really good. You get to find, uh, the, there's, there's allusions to later on in the book where Watson says, the boiler, she creeps, I think is the line and how her stay at the hotel haunted her for basically the rest of her life. And then there's scene three on the night of the Grand Masquerade. And that has, no, it wasn't Grady, it was Horace Derwent. Uh, the, I think it was the owner just before the newest owners came in, uh, where the book is, I, I can't actually remember. I know Grady was the caretaker uh, while, while Horace Derwent owned the place. But how Horace uh, swung both ways and all that goodness. So, and there's much about what happens uh, after, just before the his boy toy, as it were, ends up committing suicide, or does he, dum dum dum, by taking a bunch of pills. And then scene four, and now this word from New Hampshire. Uh, it actually goes and talk. this is a scene that really should have been in the book, where you see Jack... Torrance as a boy having to deal with his own father and you're seeing in that scene you see a child who loves his father even though his father is a monster I find that that whole that whole scene is great to me and it really should have been in the book because King says himself that that is the theme of The Shining it's loving a monster is how you can continue how a child can continue to love a parent who doesn't seemingly doesn't love them, or that loves with their fists. Uh, let's see here. Let me go on. Let me look at the last one. I think the last one is from the, uh, yeah, the Overlook Hotel, third floor, 1958. This is from the mob shooting that takes place. And that's the last one. Uh, the Overlook was at home with the dead. And then it starts with part one, prefatory matters. So that is this version of The Shining, and I really, really wish, oh, and we'll, we'll talk about after the play also, but I really wish that that section, if not after the play, before the play, was in every single version, because there's so much awesome stuff in there. Now, as far as the uh, deleted chapter from The Shining manuscript, uh, that is the final chapter of the book. And it's a deleted chapter from The Shine manuscript, way back when it was called The Shine. Chapter 58, News Log, uh, often referred to as After the Play. And then it's a, a bunch of uh, newspaper articles dealing with which, you know, dealing with what happened to each and every person afterwards. What happened to, um, I almost called her Shirley Duvall, what happens to Wendy and Danny and what happens to uh, Dick Halloran. 
which is very interesting because piece, bits and pieces of that are mentioned in Dr. Sleep. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you, this has been another Stephen King spoiler review. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!